Hey there, fight fans. In today's video, I can't say what's going to happen when I leave, but when I'm here, the people who are with me and have been with me, they, they know exactly what's up. I'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. The heavyweight throne in the UFC seems to have a champion in waiting, according to some, with John Jones being sidelined by an injury. <laughs> MMA community has responded to a recent video of UFC legend Nick Diaz, who has been hinting at a massive return to action. And Sean O'Malley officially confirms that his next fight will be with Marab de Wallace Wheelie. A lot of people said I'm ducking him. I just really am not ducking that little dude. I'm here, brother. You gotta go up. Coming down. Go up, brother. Go up. <laughs> and lastly, Antonio Bigfoot Silva has broken a nine year losing streak. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, UFC legend Nick Diaz has sparked a firestorm in the MMA community with a recent training video hinting at a return. After a disappointing comeback in 2021 where he admitted to not being fully invested, fans are now divided. Is this a chance for Diaz to redeem himself or a step too far for the 40-year-old fighter? After suffering a one-sided TKO loss to Robbie Lawler in a rematch, the UFC legend said that he was forced to return to the fight, along with his management and training camp. But now, a social media post showing Diaz is seemingly in great shape, coupled with a cryptic caption about, someone will pay very soon. Well, it's got a lot of fans buzzing. Diaz has expressed interest in a middleweight clash with Israel Adesanya, a seemingly impossible matchup for his current standing. Now, the reaction has been mixed. Some fans, while they do crave a final triumphant chapter for Diaz's career, others fear that he might tarnish his legacy by facing elite competition after such a long layoff. One fan wrote, absolutely nobody wants to see this after last time. Another wrote, hopefully he doesn't fight in the UFC, but he does look better than what he did versus Lawler. Another, already a legend, please do not tarnish the legacy. Another fan wrote, he can't beat anyone in the UFC, not one fighter. Well, ultimately the decision rests with Nick Diaz and the UFC. Will Diaz get the chance to rewrite his comeback story? Or will this end up being a sad footnote to a legendary career? The MMA community holds its breath, eager to see if the Stockton Slugger has one last fight left in him. Than anything else, so if that is the road, who'd be coming back against? When could we expect him? Weight class would be interesting. I would take the other two first, though. Who the opponent is would be the number one thing I wanted to know. And they can figure out, like, truly, before we even get down to is it gonna be boxing or is it gonna be MMA? I would want to just first know who, because whatever it is, whatever form of contact, they get down and leg wrestle on the ground, I am going to watch if Nick's involved. The heavyweight throne in the UFC seems to have a champion in waiting, according to some, with John Jones being sidelined by an injury. Jones captured the belt in March of 2023, but has not fought since. Now well, that has ignited a lot of debate should the UFC strip him of the title. Former champ Junior Dos Santos believes that the current interim champ Tom Aspinall, who earned the title with a dominant knockout over Sergei Pavlovich in November, deserves full champion status. Dos Santos argues that Jones's inactivity makes Aspinall the true champion. Not only Dos Santos, but many fans and fighters are increasingly questioning the legitimacy of Jones holding the belt while being unable to compete. MMA fans know that the UFC will not strip John Jones because, well, the UFC wants a fight against Stipe Miocic for the belt. But the fight itself holds enough prestige without the belt being on the line, given the fighters established reputations already. The belt is obviously the goal for every athlete, but more to crown the position they are in today, Dos Santos recently said in an interview. The belt is a symbol that you're number one. But John Jones and even Miocic, we already know they are number one and two, or at least that they're at the top of the division. But I think they're both extremely experienced and have long careers, so they should do what's best for them. There is no point to fight only to fight or to do things that they don't believe in at this stage of their careers. Let's see what happens next. Well, will the UFC hold firm and wait for Jones's return, or will the pressure to crown an active champion force their hand? 
One thing is for sure, the heavyweight division is in a state of flux, and the question of who truly reigns supreme hangs in the air. Now, as you already know, the UFC bantamweight division is abuzz with the upcoming clash between reigning champion Sugar Sean O'Malley and the relentless number one contender Marab the Machine to Wallace Wheelie. O'Malley's coach, Tim Welch, acknowledges the threat that DeWallace Wheelie poses. DeWallace Wheelie's ironclad cardio and relentless wrestling attack have overwhelmed every opponent that he has faced. On the other hand, Welch highlights that O'Malley's advantage in a big cage, which is a reference to O'Malley's exceptional footwork and ability to keep opponents at bay with his jab. The intrigue lies in whether O'Malley can utilize his striking prowess against DeWallace Wheelie's relentless takedown attempts. Or will DeWallace Wheelie drag the fight into his world on the ground, smothering O'Malley's offense with his smothering pressure? This fight will be a test of O'Malley's mental fortitude. Can he stay composed under the immense pressure that Marab brings? Well, beyond the technical aspects, there is a layer of personal motivation for O'Malley. Many fans perceive him as avoiding Marab, a perception Welch aims to dispel, saying Marab is just a beast. Anybody who goes on a 10-fight winning streak has a certain sense of self-confidence that is intimidating, and his cardio is incredible, Tim Welch stated on the MMA Hour. Marab's next. Marab is next. Your wish is granted. A lot of people said I'm ducking him. I just really am not ducking that little dude. I like the fight for me. There's multiple ways to win. I'm excited about the fight now, finally. I was just never, I was never ducking him. I was just never excited to fight him. He's just such a, I don't know. What, now is it the right time? Just like the Cheeto rematch. Like the time will come to where it's the right time to fight certain people. Rab's next. And uh, careful what you wish for, buddy. With O'Malley's star power and Wallace Wheelie's relentless pursuit of gold, well, this fight promises some fireworks. It is a classic striker versus grappler matchup with significant implications for the bantamweight division. Will Suga showcase his striking mastery and shut up the doubters? Or will the machine score another dominant victory and become the new king of the UFC bantamweight division? What do you guys think about all of this? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. And by the way, I almost forgot, DeWallace Wheelie received American citizenship just a few days ago. That's how I live, just working hard and uh, uh, everything is possible. Thank you everyone, congratulations. Well, congratulations, Marab. That is pretty awesome. And he will undoubtedly be a pretty good citizen and a good example for the future generation. Today is beautiful day here in Las Vegas and I saw Paulo Costa Ch Wow. But I think it's time to stall his food. I'm gonna go here. Cafeteria and then stall his food. I'm gonna I need my rematch. Now let's see what what kind of food this guy has. Okay, now I'm stalling. Ooh, mushroom, some steak, vegetables. What's up, brother? You bring, you bring our food. <laughs> Brother. I'm hungry. <laughs> what to have okay, brother, it, it's so <laughs> Oh shit. Yeah. The yeah, food is the best. <laughs> so far. This, this is actually your food, not my food. This is your your food. This is your food. I stole your food today. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> we got my food today. <laughs> we are friends. Yeah. Okay, one and one. I got my rematch back, okay? One, one, blood all over my place, but I wonder whose blood is coach, whose blood is this? I don't believe, right? Oh, whose blood Let's is go. this? Let's go, it's that hard work, that's what it is. Blood, sweat, and tears, oh, baby. This guy, oh, shit. I got no blood guy? on me, what are you talking about? Yeah. I got There's no nose. Blood. 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 Tell him to don't need too much car, he has to, he can go one for you. He's too big, brother. 
good if you want to. Doesn't doesn't make sense to come 135. I'm here, brother. You gotta go up. Down. Go up, brother. Go up. But Antonio Bigfoot Silva, well, he has finally broke a nine-year losing streak against former UFC heavyweight Juan Espino. The fight, which topped the La Despedida mixed martial arts tournament in Spain last weekend, went the full distance and ended in a draw. Antonio Silva, who is 44, last won in August of 2015 at UFC 190, finishing a second round TKO over Soa Palele. After that, Bigfoot suffered 12 defeats in a row, so congratulations to him for finally getting a draw. Dana White was prepared to step down from his cherished position to assist his friend Joe Rogan. In 2022, Rogan encountered intense criticism when a video compilation of him using the N-word on his podcast circulated widely on social media. The video emerged prior to UFC 271, which Rogan opted to forego, potentially putting his employment in jeopardy. I'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N-word. It's a video that's made of clips taken out of context of me of 12 years of conversations on my podcast. Now, I know that to most people, there is no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that word, never mind publicly on a podcast. And I agree with that now. I haven't said it in years, but for a long time, I thought as long as it was in context, people would understand what I was doing. I was also talking about how there's not another word like it in the entire English language is allowed to use it and they can use it in so many different ways. Like if a white person says that word, it's racist and toxic, but a black person can use it and it could be a punchline, it could be a term of endearment to a rap song, it could be a positive affirmation. It's a very unusual word, but it's not my word to use. I'm well aware of that now. And there's another clip that I have to address. There's a clip from 11 years ago. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes, but it sure can sounded like that. As per Lex Fridman, White allegedly issued a resignation threat from the UFC to safeguard Rogan's commentary role at that moment. The fear factor guy, yeah. you know, to be such a key component to not only the company, but to the sport. I saw it in the interview on Ivory Keenan Wayans. A lot. And I remember there was a moment not too long ago, maybe a year ago, when I was sitting with Joe and he had a phone call with you. Joe was getting canceled for something and uh, they didn't want him commentating the fights. And you on the phone offered your resignation over this. I got teary eyed over that. That's such a, you're a good man, you know? Thank you. That was powerful. Anybody who is with me, has been with me, knows. When you're with me, you're with me. It's a two way street. It's not yeah. a, it's not a one way street. Um, I'm not one of these guys that, uh, is going to roll over and, uh, it's like going through COVID. Um, I wasn't laying any of these people. Some of these people have been with me for 20 years. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to lay them off. Mm -mm. This motherfucker will burn, <laughs> burn <laughs> yeah. before I would do that to my oh, people. Yeah. It's just, it's just never that none of that type of stuff. Yeah. is ever going to happen while I'm here. I can't say what's going to happen when I leave, but when I'm here, the people who are with me and have been with me, they they know exactly what's up. And Joe knows what's up. And 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 it's and again, it's a two-way street. Joe Rogan has been very loyal to me, and I am very loyal to Joe Rogan. That's all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it is very important to us, and thank you all in advance.